Welcome to Hamer Reviews. My name is Christopher Hamer, and this is the first monthly analysis of the solar power generated from our new PV system that was installed in August. So we're going to be taking a look back at the month of September, how much energy we produced, maybe delve a little bit into the north and south uh, arrays and see the differences there, plus what the general issues we might have faced with the solar system and any other points I can share from the month of September. So let's jump straight into it, shall we? In the month of September, we used 571 kilowatt hours of electricity. Now, given that September is when, you know, the solar power generation starts to taper down for the winter, I was really surprised to see that we still um, created, or rather used, 79% of our own electricity. So we only needed 21% from the grid. In terms of real world numbers, that was 450 kilowatt hours that we produced and used ourselves, and 120 kilowatt hours that we took from the grid. Those numbers, in my opinion, are fantastic. We run a hot tub, um, which uses quite a bit of electricity, and as the weather got quite a bit colder, um, that was really good to see those numbers still quite high. Now, I must say, the month of September was not great in terms of weather. Um, it was all right towards the start, but towards, you know, it wasn't amazing in terms of August to September was a, a huge change. So I'm glad that those numbers were still as high as they were. The thing that stood out most to me was the huge impact that our battery had. Because we actually had 65% of that self-consumed electricity come from the battery, almost 300 kilowatt hours. So what that tells me is that 9.7 kilowatt hour battery that we have installed is really making a huge difference in terms of how much um, electricity that we can use ourselves from our system versus what we would have just sent to the grid. And on the subject of export, we actually exported a further 44.6 kilowatt hours of power to the grid um, that we weren't able to consume or store in the battery. Now, that means that we actually produced closer to 500 kilowatt hours, so we could have even reduced our reliance on the grid even further if we'd had a larger battery system. I'm still really pleased with these numbers, because for me, being able to rely less on the grid is obviously the key to having a solar system, because it means that we're not having to buy that electricity at potentially inflated costs. The government price cap in the UK that they've now implemented means that the ceiling for how much we can pay for electricity has been limited to a certain extent, but it's still very expensive. I'm on a fixed tariff until next September, so I'm very interested to see what the prices will be then. Presumably, from what the government said, the price will be the same for two years, so there is a level of certainty, but it's still much higher than I'm currently paying. Of course, that exported electricity, almost 45 kilowatt hours, would also have helped to offset the 120 kilowatt hours that we needed to buy. Unfortunately, I only have had my Octopus outgoing Agile tariff active as of literally yesterday. So there's um, nothing I really could do and I didn't get paid for the 45 kilowatts that I exported. Because it's an Agile tariff, I can't really work out what I would have been paid either. So unfortunately, that's something we're going to have to wait for future videos. The thing I noticed most was the weather just had a huge impact on the system's production. The best day that we had, looking at the figures here in front of me, was the 4th of September, where we were able to produce 24 kilowatt hours of electricity. Beyond that, though, uh, well, actually, another day we had 25, but beyond that, the numbers just weren't that amazing. We were regularly seeing less than 20 on some days, less than 15 kilowatt hours. And on those days, they're obviously the ones where we had to rely on the grid and pull in quite a lot of electricity. The biggest difference was the weather getting colder because the hot tub isn't the best insulated in the world. And so as the weather got colder, it was pulling more power. So on some days we needed 26 kilowatt hours. And if we've only produced 15, you can do the math yourself with how much power we had to pull from the grid those days. The good news um, in terms of our electricity use is that uh, we're probably going to be switching off the hot tub for the winter because it's far too cold. Um, so that power usage is going to drop and October we might be able to be, um, or rather, yeah, October, November, we might be a bit more self-reliant than you'd expect because our electricity usage is going to drop significantly. One of the things I really wanted to do uh, was look into much further detail the north and south arrays. Now, what I didn't realize with the Solar Edge platform is I can't seem to look back at the um, strings and 
the actual individual panels in terms of what they produced um, between uh, separate months. So I can either look at the current month, which is October, for which I have half the data, or I can look at everything that we've produced so far, i.e. since um, August. Looking at that total figure is very interesting. Um, the panels on the south side of the house have produced between 71 roughly and 77 kilowatt hours of power each. Those figures are far better than I was expecting, so it's great that those are doing really well. And on the back, we're producing between 34, just over 34, and 38 kilowatt hours of power per panel. So roughly, the north side is producing half the power that the um, south side is. Now that isn't actually an accurate story because if I look into the future a little bit, um, specifically into October, um, my figures are quite different. The front is producing, let's say on average, 18 kilowatt hours, and the back is only producing just under six. That obviously is quite a bit less. It's, it's only a third. This is to be expected because of the north roof getting a lot less sun um, in the winter months, it's just going to be producing less and that's going to get worse and worse and worse to um, the middle of December uh, to the uh, shortest day of the year, at which point we'll start to see an improvement. So I'm interested to see the impact that those panels make um, later on in the year. Now, one thing I, I don't have the, the screenshots to show you because I didn't take them at the time that I find really interesting is on cloudy days. If you have the right kind of cloud, God, that sounds ridiculous. It's like the wrong kind of leaves on the railway. Um, but if you have the right kind of cloud that is diffusing sunlight really well, I find that the north and south arrays can produce almost um, an equal amount of electricity on those days. So I'm gonna look out for those and get some screenshots, hopefully for October or November, because it just shows the value of having those north sides on really bad days where you're just not producing much. At least you can get a lot more than you would with just the south array. So my initial analysis is that our reliance on the battery is far higher. So the fact that, you know, 65% of that self-consumed power went through the battery is great because that means that the battery is doing exactly what we want it to be doing. And hopefully in a couple of months, I can sit down and do some real calculations as to how quickly that battery would in theory pay off at current retail prices. The other thing I find really interesting is that that export figure was actually really low. So because that self-consumption was so high because of the battery, we actually didn't need to export much. Now that's gonna be completely different in May, June, July, and August. But for the month of September, I'm pretty pleased that we only had to export 45 kilowatt hours, especially as I wasn't being paid for them. Obviously the import number of 120 kilowatts is still kind of high, um, but I did expect it to be higher. And to be frank, if you're not running something crazy like a hot tub, you can reduce your energy usage significantly. If we weren't running that, we wouldn't have needed anything from the grid, I don't think. Um, so, because even on the worst day, um, which was, we produced just under 10 kilowatt hours of power, we only used 12.5 that day. So for me, if we hadn't had the hot tub running, we undoubtedly wouldn't have needed to buy um, electricity. So in the UK, in London specifically, if you have eight kilowatts of panels, four on the south side, four on the um, north side, and a six kilowatt inverter with a 10 kilowatt battery, you probably could be relatively self-reliant even into September, which is kind of crazy, especially as the weather wasn't that great. October is proving to be equally awful. Uh, the weather has been absolutely awful so far this month. So make sure you check back um, at the latest in the middle of uh, November when we'll be looking back at October's figures. If you have any suggestions for other information you'd like me to share, because I realize I've just shown some graphs and talked through some numbers, but it would be great to hear from you what you'd find useful in terms of these future videos. And I will adapt this because this is very much a work in progress. And I'm sure the format of this is gonna change a lot as we go. Um, but I wanted to get the video out there rather than waiting longer and longer. So this is the initial uh, video that you're gonna get. Any other questions about the system, um, make sure you check out the Solar Power series. I've linked that above. It's a uh, nice little playlist of videos. The first one is the Tesla Powerwall, which is slightly older that I did a couple of years back. But after that, they're all about the system we have installed and how to choose your own one. So make sure you check those out. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up as that really helps me out. Make sure you subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope I see you in the next update in a month's time. And make sure you check out my other videos as well. There'll be some suggested ones after this. Thanks very much for watching. See you again next time. Bye-bye.